Good morning. It's good to welcome you to Wabash Avenue Presbyterian Church this Sunday morning. We welcome our members and visitors and friends and folks who are online. We welcome you, although we're separated spatially, we're one spiritually, uh, because we're two or more gathered, the Holy Spirit is in the house, so we give thanks for that. We give thanks. I give thanks, Alan, for you. I've already had my worship service thanks to you helping bring me in contact with the Lord. So thank you for your gifts. And Lainey, we haven't even heard from you yet, but thank you for being here uh, to lead us in, in our songs. Um, I uh, uh, have had a, a good sabbatical. I feel like a human being again. I've done a lot of good reading, I've done some writing, and I've actually exercised my body a little bit. So uh, my soul is, I think, once again, sort of put back in its normal shambly shape, but uh, a little bit better than it was, certainly was. So I want to thank you all for that grace and that gift, uh, which is just, uh, well, like I said, it feels good to be alive again. So um, anyway. Uh, let us now come before the Lord in worship. Our call to worship is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. The Lord made us, and we are God's. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord. Bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. And God's faithfulness to all generations.
Hear now our call to confession. God makes no distinctions. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all, so much so that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Therefore, trusting in God's grace, let us now confess our sins to God, who is ready to forgive you. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Holy God, you made us in your image, but we demean ourselves. You created us to reflect your goodness and love, but we devalue others, causing them to suffer, and we despoil your world, threatening everything that lives. Saving God, have mercy and forgive us. Help us to change. By your Spirit, fill us with your truth and love, so we may live for you as new creations. In Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Here now our declaration of pardon. Galatians chapter 15 verse 1 tells us, For freedom Christ has set you free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit to a yoke of slavery. The things we confess are erased. We are completely, eternally unburdened of them. If God has gone so far as to purge our sins, who are we to remember them? Remind yourself of this when you begin beating yourself up over something in the past, something for which you have already been forgiven. Why pick up the yoke of slavery that God has removed? Instead, repent. Change your ways and simply move on, walking in the way of your Savior. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Holy God, speak your word to us and breathe your spirit upon us that we may know the truth and follow the way that leads to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the epistles from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 10. So listen now for God's word as it speaks to you. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived according to the passions of our flesh, following the desires of the flesh and senses. And we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else, but God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For what we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, one of the things I got to do while I was on sabbatical was to see some movies. And the movie theaters are starting to open up, but I'm just talking about movies I saw on Netflix. And one of the ones I got to watch was Toy Story 4. And if you haven't seen it, it's a great movie. And, and the Toy Story movies are about the lives of toys who come to life when the children who, to whom they belong is away. There's a whole collection of Mr. Potato Head's Cranky and T-Rex, this little green dinosaur is afraid of everything. There's an astronaut figure, Buzz Lightyear, who's kind of a dimwit. And then there's a cowboy toy, Sheriff Woody, who is their leader. He's voiced by Tom Hanks. And Woody's a kind figure who looks out after over all the other toys and the child to whom they belong. This is a, a little girl named Bonnie. Well, early in the movie, Bonnie, on her first day of kindergarten, uh, goes to the classroom and the kids get to make something. And all the other kids go over to the art supplies table, but Bonnie, looking down in a trash can, sees what she wants to do. And she pulls out a spork. Now, you all know what that is. It's a, a spoon and a fork put together. It's a spoon with a bunch of serrated edges on the top. It's a spork. She gets that, she grabs a pipe cleaner, she finds a discarded popsicle stick. They're trash, they're in the trash can, but Bonnie, instead of seeing waste, sees possibility. So she gets a little bit of Play-Doh and makes a base, and she snaps the, the popsicle stick in two, she puts those in for the feet, she stands the spork up into the Play-Doh so it's standing up, and then she takes the pipe cleaner and she puts some arms on it. And then on the back of the bowl, she puts a smiley face and two googly eyes. And then once she stands back from seeing what she's, she has made, she says, Forky, your name is Forky. And then holding this little figure to her cheek, she says, I love you, Forky. You're my new best friend. And there's something interesting that happens during that embrace. Forky becomes alive. He's sentient. He knows he's alive. He's trying to figure out what's happened to him when suddenly into Bonnie's backpack he goes and they're headed for, for their trip home. Well, once back in Bonnie's room with all the humans away, the toys come out to welcome their new friend. They help Forky out of the backpack. They begin to welcome him as Bonnie's newest toy. But Forky's not having it. He said, toy? I'm not a toy. He says, I'm trash. And he sees a nearby wastebasket and he hops in it. But well, Woody's horrified and he rescues Forky saying, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. You are not trash. You're a toy. To which Forky stubbornly replies, no, I'm trash. I'm a spork. I'm made of plastic that's supposed to be used one time and then thrown away. I've been used one time. That means I'm trash. And as Forky bounds back into the wastebasket, he does a cannonball and yells, freedom. But the exasperated Woody pulls him out of the trash again, saving him from oblivion in some landfill, saying, listen, Bonnie loves you. You think your trash, but to her, your treasure. She made you. She gave you arms and legs and eyes. You're now a toy. You're Bonnie's toy. No, my life is over. I was made for soup, salad, maybe some chili, and then the trash. Geronimo. But before Forky can hop back into the trash, Woody grabs him and gathers him up in a big bear hug, saying, I know that's what you think. But you're a toy. Bonnie made you. She loves you. That is who you are. Well, over the course of the movie, Forky slowly, happily realizes that he's not a one-and-done, destined-for-the-trash thing. He does belong. He is loved. Turns out, Forky isn't the only spork in the drawer who has some false notions about his origin his worth, his purpose, and his destiny. There are a whole lot of people who are living, existing for all the wrong reasons, 
and who are subsequently sadly throwing themselves away. Here are some of the assumptions that are out there in the culture and that are in here in us. I am the captain of my own ship. I'm all on my own. I belong only to myself. My worth is determined by my output, which is measured by how much money I make. The purpose of life, there is no purpose to life. We exist in a random, cruel universe, and then we die. Life is short, anytime you get is luck, so you have gotta grab the gusto while you can. You gotta get the big house, the fancy car, the trophy spouse, the perfect kids, growing portfolio, Got to get all that because the one who dies with the most toys wins. The needy, they're on their own. I've got mine. They can go get theirs. Thank God. We don't have to live for all of those dead ends. Thank God there's another way. Thank heavens all of that just ain't true. Thank heavens the good news is this. You are not your own. You belong to God. You belong to God who made you out of love. You're here to love God, neighbor, and creation. You're not accidentally here to exist only for acquisition. You were purposefully created to live for compassion, gentleness, kindness, humility, and love. You're not a random fact or a freak occurrence in a cruel universe. You are God's own beloved child, purposefully, lovingly placed within a beautiful creation that is good. And you, you were created, and God said these words over you, you are very good. Your worth isn't determined by your output. You are of infinite worth simply because God loves you. And you, and you, and you, and all of us. You are so loved that even when all of our bad choices consigned us to the trash, God sent a Savior, Jesus of Nazareth, to bring us home, to tell us who we really are, and to show us how to really live. You don't exist for yourself. You don't even belong to yourself. You belong to God who created you out of love and who saves us because God so loved the world, because God so loves you. But not just you alone. You belong to a family. You belong to God's family. God's love is saving people who've been thrown away, people who've been told that they're garbage, People who've been kicked to the curb and tossed out in the trash. God's love is saving them. God's love is saving us all. And we're to get in on that love, to accept God's love and then share God's love by helping the needy, by blessing the outcast, and by lifting up those who've been thrown away. And when our time on this earth is done, we're not destined for oblivion. God's love is so powerful, it even undid death. Easter is God's victory, which means that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. To quote another children's truth that's not just from children... Margaret Wise Brown, in her children's book, The Runaway Bunny, lets us listen in on a dialogue between a mother rabbit and her little, rather stubborn baby bunny, who says, I'm going to run away. To which the patient mother rabbit says, if you run away, I'll come find you. You're my little bunny. If you come find me, says the little bunny, then I'll turn into a fish in a stream and swim away from you. The bemused mother rabbit says, if you become a fish in a stream, I'll become a man and I'll fish for you. If you fish and catch me, says the little bunny, then I'll become a rock high up on a mountain. But the mother rabbit says, well, if you do that, I'll become a mountain climber and I'll climb to where you are. 
Undeterred, the little bunny says that he'll then become a crocus in a hidden garden or a bird or a sailboat or a circus acrobat. But the mother rabbit just smiles and says that she would then become a gardener, a tree, the wind, and a tightrope walker to tend, shelter, direct, and pursue wherever the little bunny goes. Finally, the little bunny says, if you do all of that, then I'll become a boy and I'll run into a house. But without missing a beat, the mother rabbit says, if you become a boy and run into a house, I'll become your mother and I'll catch you in my arms. Happily defeated, the little bunny says, well, shucks, I might as well just stay here and be your little bunny. Isn't it wonderful to know, whether you're a bunny or a human being, that there is a love so big, so powerful, so in love with us, that we can't escape. We can't mess it up. We can't miss out. And we can't be anything else except it's beloved. It's not a bad way to live. Rumor has it that love saves us. Some believe that truth sets us free. Some really believe that. Do you? Let us affirm our faith now using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And let us pray. Holy God, creator we are thankful O oh lord for this miracle that you have placed within our bodies this miracle of life we're thankful for the breath in our lungs we're thankful for the vitalities that you give us we're thankful lord that we are here that we are yours and that we have good works that you have prepared beforehand to be our way of life to live into and to become fully alive. We pray, O oh Lord, for your world. We pray, Lord, for the search continuing in Miami. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to help survivors to be found. We pray, Lord, for the nations of our world, that you will help them and help us to live together in peace. We pray for all who are in positions of authority, that you may uh, lead them that they may lead us wisely and well. Bless them, give them wisdom to lead and humility to serve and help them to advance the common good. We pray for our community, O oh God. We ask your grace to be with us and among us so that we may truly be neighbors and create a community of welcome uh, that is livable for all. We pray your blessings on the other groups who use this facility for the, the fish clothing pantry, for the recovery groups, for the counselors, for the Montessori school. We pray that all those people who come in and out of this building may find clothing to wear and recovery to live and healing to embody and, Lord, knowledge to grow and to learn and to share. And, Lord, we pray that as they come here, that they may be touched by your grace and your blessings and our love. 
We pray, O oh Lord, for all who are ill, asking for your healing blessings for them. We pray for all who grieve, asking for you to grant them your peace. And Lord, we would also pray these are silent prayers. Lord, we thank you for receiving our prayers and for receiving us as your forgiven, redeemed, and loved children. Unite us now in one voice in the prayer that our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
as we go forth, I charge us all to remember who we are and whose we are. We belong to God, and God's love holds us now, always has, always will. Let us go out now and live and share that grace. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn a shining face toward you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. I'm sorry. At ten. Yeah, yeah. From 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 uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day. Sorry about that.